Echocardiography, it is uh, eco probes. Another eco probe we should have a smaller footprint. It's different from the other uh, probes because it should uh, fit to the rib space. Okay, one difference is the uh, eco probe. And then the other is the electronic beam, still in features, facilitate scanning. So uh, different anatomy uh, areas from different side of the heart. So we need to look from the different side of the heart to look and to identify <coughs> whether the structural uh, abnormalities using the uh, phase array probe. So we call it eco probe or phase array probe. So it's different from the abdominal probe or the linear probe. So there are two fundamental uh, properties of the eco probe. Eco, one is to look for the cardiac structure and the other is to look for the function. That means a contractility. So the basics of uh, ECO will have uh, anatomical 2D mode or B mode echocardiography. And more of the advanced is realizing is a Doppler, uh, performing Doppler or of advanced. So the B mode it relies primarily on the relative strengths or amplitudes. That means the wavelengths of the reflected ultrasound echo, which determines the echo reflexibility or the degree of brightness. And then uh, it, it just tells us the anatomic structure, the B mode is 2D, it just tell you like uh, from two dimensions. And then you see the size, the difference from the right, left, and you see the measurements of the different structures on the, on the earth. So there is Doppler, which analyzes the change in uh, shift or uh, from frequency difference. So you use a uh, different velocity of blood flow. So, you know, there are different flows, in the atrium, the ventricles, the valves, there are different velocities. So based on that velocity, you will uh, decide. So that's Doppler echo. So normally, clinically, we divide into conventional echo and Doppler echo. So the conventional echo, it, it, it consists of the 2D and also the M mode, you know, the M mode from the basics. So it tells us uh, a motion at the time T. Okay, so the movement of the structure at the time T. So that's motion mode. So you use a motion mode and also 2D mode in a conventional echo, whereas uh, you will have different Dopplers, the continuous wave Doppler, pulsed wave Doppler and uh, Color flow. So these are the three things that you will assess on the Doppler echocardiography. So what are the differences in the uh, conventional? That means the B mode or the, the, the Doppler. That B mode is mainly used for assessing the cardiac structure, whereas uh, the Doppler is about the cardiac function. Function. It tells us the anatomy, and then we see the B mode or the conventional, whereas the physiology hemodynamics is assessed using the Doppler. In target issues, the myocardium, the pericardium, the heart muscles, the grave vessels, this is assessed by the 2D or the conventional, whereas the Doppler tells you about blood flow. Okay. The morphology, the size, the shape of the different structures is assessed with 2D, whereas the direction, whether it is going in the direction of the probe or whether it's going away. And uh, how is the flow pattern? How is the velocity? Is the velocity increasing? So that's assessed using Doppler echo. So when you are using a B mode or a conventional, uh, the ultrasound beam should be perpendicular, perpendicular to the structure. So when you assess uh, like the, the area of the left ventricle or the size or the difference from the right and the left, it should be you measure on perpendicular distance. Whereas in Doppler, it should be parallel to the flow. So it should be parallel to the flow. 
So if you measure it a flow away or in a perpendicular, so there will be difference in the measurements. Whereas tissue Doppler is the same as Doppler, but you know, remove uh, tissue motion using tissue Doppler. So what's the advantage of echocardiography? There are different advantages, as you know, it used as a diagnostic utility. Yeah, it's versatile, portable, it's, uh, you can assess in bedside. You can see immediate results and uh, there is no radiation risk. So there is no main patient discomfort. So what are the indications in the emergency? These are the basic indications in emergency, uh, American College of Emergency uh, Physician. They have a policy statement in 2006, the use of uh, eco in uh, emergency the primary indication and the extended indications. So the primary indication, it tells about the detection of pericardial effusion, whether there is cardiac tamponade or not, and the evaluation of the cardiac activity, cardiac array, and also to assess the early systolic function. That means the induction fraction. This is a basic or a primary indication, especially in the emergency. Extended to assess, Intraventricular status, IVC, IVC, RV evaluation to look for distended RV, in, uh, like in massive PE. And evaluation of proximal aorta for dissection and in the bedside and the proximal aorta. Sometimes also it's a guidance for a procedure. So while doing a pericardial thesis, so it can be used as uh, guidance. So what do you use? So the probe should be a low frequency, 3.5 to 5 megahertz. So the probe, there are different issues, especially the probe direction. Uh, this is very essential while you are scanning because if you change the directions and if you misinterpret, uh, you may misdiagnose. So the primary indicators, so you may use eco probe or you may use ab abdominal ultrasound probe. So the main important point is the preset. So if the preset is eco, then the direction of the eco is with a cardio register. Whereas if you continue with the abdominal direction, like in the emergency perspective, always to the right, always to the head, right? So anything transverse, should be the probe direction to the right. If you are looking longitudinal, the probe direction should be towards the head. So this is the emergency rule. But the cardiologist is different. Different for uh, different anatomies or different views. So for parastana long and short axis, the probe direction is towards parastana long. Mm -hmm. The right shoulder. Okay, the right shoulder. Uh, what was the parastanal uh, short? Left shoulder. Left shoulder. So sometimes it may vary. Okay, sometimes you can uh, directly look immediately from the parastanal to the shoulder. Then you can immediately rotate after you find a better image in the parastanal long axis. The difficult one is apical four chamber and subxytoid. The direction for apical four chamber is using emergency view and the cardiac view. That's a better terminology, I think. So, in an emergency view, in apical four chamber, the direction of the probe should be? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the direction of the probe should be to the patient's right, always right. So the right hip, the direction of the probe should be to the right hip. Where about in the eco or the cardiologist view is a probe direction to the left, three o'clock. Left three o'clock, that means almost if the patient is so fine, almost transverse direction. What about sub -xyphoids? in the emergency view? Is common, especially in fast assessing to the right. Okay, you do sub to the patient right. What about in the echo or sorry, the cardiology to the left? The probe direction should be to the left. So you need to understand what are the structures you will see in different directions. 
Okay, if you understand the direction and then the structures, you can do in both ways. So the patient positioning is the preferred position is to time, but sometimes you need to move the patient left lateral. Okay, left lateral to make the heart closer to the chest. Okay, closer to the chest. So there are different, so the, there are also additional sometimes trasternal, not that much common from the above the clavicle and the manubrium. So this is mostly used for uh, out to look from the higher. Parasternal, long and short, apical, and subglyphoids or substernal. So this is classification is based on the anatomy and then capillary supply. So as you see, the heart will be divided in here in long axis plane. So the proper direction should be towards the right shoulder. So you cut it like this. Okay. When you make 90 degree rotation like this, you rotate it. So we'll see this one, the heart in short axis. It will be cut from different sections. So as you see, this is, what is this? Yes? Huh? No, 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 this one, the vessel. The left main, left main. This is right, coronal. And down here, left, and here descending. And then that rotates the left circumference. And here is, what is this? Posterior descending. Coronary. So let's start from the parastana long axis view. So the parastana long axis view, uh, so the probe should be placed on the fourth or fifth intercostal space. Probe should be placed over there, and then you angle the probe towards the patient uh, shoulder, right shoulder. So what are the structures you will see in the parasternal long axis? <coughs> right ventricle, left ventricle, aorta, left atrium, mitral valve, Okay, so you see the RV, it's part of the RV anteriorly. So it just is outflow tract of LA, mitral valve, LV long axis, and the aortic valve with aortic root. This is what you see. So you see the probe direction should be towards the right shoulder. Okay, you can pick it, make the patient. Uh, to lie more of uh, left lateral. So this is what you see, okay? So the probe direction determines whether you are using echo set or the others. So if the probe direction is on the same side, on the right side, so this is abdominal, you are using abdominal or the other set. So echo set is probe direction or the marker will shift to the left side. Okay, this is the one that determines whether you are using the echo or uh, abdominal. So as you see here, this is the left ventricle, and then you'll have left atrium here, and then the aorta. You'll have aortic valve, okay? You have a uh, mitral valve, okay? And this is a uh, right ventricle, right flow tract. Okay? And here, the same. So this is crucial, especially to identify identify pleural versus pericardial fusion. So what is this, the white structure here? Yeah? It's a pericardial, pericardial. So when you see in detail, so this is our right ventricular flow tract, this is a septum, okay, LV, LV outflow tract, uh, aortic valve is a valve, and then uh, aortic root. Mitral valve in the left atrium. So this is a normal anatomy. So left ventricle, okay, and then arvioti, okay, the aorta with aortic valve, aortic root. Left atrium, 
mitral valve, so this is the apex. So these are the papillary muscles. So more of in detail, this is uh, when you go in, so the mitral valve will have two leaflets, okay? Anterior and posterior, okay? The anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet, these are important. So the anterior leaflet uh, during systole should go to the septum, okay? So it goes to the septum and then uh, it should come back, okay? And uh, you know, the descending aorta, uh, Ascending aorta. So the ascending aorta, aorta has how many cars? Very right. But you see only two here. Two, the right coronary and, and then coronary cusp. So the left coronary cusp is not uh, visible. So you'll see this on mitral, sorry, in the short axis. During the short axis, you will see the three views. So this is a posterior papillary muscles, the septum. In the right ventricle, left ventricle. So this is a very wide, is a very cardiac. So there are things you can do, okay? So like mode in different areas. So one of the things you can do is uh, you can start from uh, uh, the mid aortic valve, okay, the aortic valve. So when you are doing the aortic valve, you can do at the level of the aortic valve. So you will see uh, systole and diastole, okay? So it's almost rectangular when it's open, it becomes like rectangular. When it's closed, and then it becomes rectangular. Uh, so the right coronary and the right coronary cusp, systole and diastole. So you see like it, it makes a rectangle when it's open. Is it visible? So the guy is closed here. When it's open, it becomes rectangle. This is aortic valve from here to here. Okay. But this aorta is aorta. Okay. So you can measure the distance from uh, below the valve at the valve level and above the valve area. Okay. Different measurements. So the other you can do MMODs at the mitral valve level. And the mitral valve level, you can work uh, M mode. So as you see here, there are up and downs here. So the first thing that you have to see is the above one, that this black area is the right ventricle and then followed by the septum. Okay, this is the septum. And this open area is the left ventricle. And this up and down deflection is a mitral valve movement. Okay, the mitral valve movement. And this area is a posterior wall of the left ventricle. And the white one is a pericardium. Okay, that's a pericardium. So this is important to measure different ejection fraction or estimations uh, and then uh, mitral valve movement, diastolic dysfunction is assessed using this. So, when you come in detail, the mitral valve area, so you see there is upward deflection. This is the E. It starts from the Ds and it goes on E. That means the mitral valve is opened fully. Okay. So that leads to a radiastolic feeling. That gives E. Okay. We call it E. The second part is A. There is another kick. So that this is atrial kick. There are two movements in the mitral valve. Two times that the mitral valve will open. One is during the astor, and then the second one is atrial kick. Okay, the atrial kick. So after the early diastolic filling, then there is partial diastasis or partial closure of the mitral valve, followed by the atrial kick, and then finally the mitral leaflet will close. Will close. Okay, so this is the anterior mitral leaflet, and this one is the posterior mitral valve. Is this clear? So you should know E and A, the others are not that much. 
if you know E and E. So the early diastole and then atrial kick. Sometimes there are conditions that leads to the loss of atrial kick, like in a patient with atrial fibrillation, there will be loss of atrial kick. And E is used for uh, EPSS. Do you know EPSS? Okay. So we'll see that. Okay, so when you saw to the left ventricle, okay, left ventricle dimensions. So you see reports on the echo, interventricular septum, LV, right? Posterior wall, systole, diastole. Those measurements are gained from here. Okay, so you start from the interventricular septum, so the septum during systole and diastole. So what will happen to systole? The interventricular septum will what will happen during systole? It will short, okay. But in diastole, sorry, no, during systole, it will contract because it's a muscle. When it contracts, it increases, okay. Then the left ventricle diameter. So this direction, this one is diastole, sorry. So this is systole, this is diastole. Okay. The left ventricle diameter will increase during diastole. The left ventricle diameter during systole will decrease. Okay, will decrease. Okay, so what you measure is LV systolic diameter, LV diastolic diameter. Interventricular symptom during systole, interventricular symptom during diastole, and then the last one is posterior one. Okay, posterior one during systole and diastole. So this is diastole, posterior one, this is systole, posterior one. Okay, is that all? Is that all? So during systole, the ventricle will contract. So in that area, the LV area or LV diameter will shorten. So that means a muscle will contract. Then the LV diameter will be shorter. So this is, this one, sorry, this one is systole and this one is diastole. So the measurement that you do, interventricular symptom during systole is this one. Interventricular septum during diastole is this one. Then interventricular LV diameter during systole is this one, from here to here. Interventricular, sorry, LV diameter during diastole. LV diameter during systole. Then posterior roll during systole, posterior roll during, during diastole. So the thing, what are the things you will ask us on the parasternal lobe axis on 2D and DM mode? One, you can assess through the mitral valve area, aortic valve, aortic root that you already see. Okay, you can do M mode over there. You can measure the aortic root. Okay, you can measure it and then the size can be determined. You can assess the aortic stenosis. Okay, aortic stenosis. And you can measure the left atrium. Okay, so when you measure the left atrium, Okay, so this is the left atrium. So you measure perpendicular from outer to inner. Okay, you measure the LA diameter. And you can measure uh, interventricular septum during systole and diastole. LV internal diameter. You can zoom the mitral valve and you can look for the mitral valve abnormalities. Okay, mitral valve like calcification. Because you can, you can see easily. Let me say, I'm in a mitral regurgitation. Now, let me the moment. If I you need additional Doppler. But now, you just see the structure. The other is, you can also look for a mitral valve prolapse. Okay. Normally, the posterior mitral valve will prolapse. So, you look the movement of the mitral valve of the posterior one. And the mitral valve area can be calculated. Thank you.